Good day to you all, and welcome to this 23rd day of April. It's day 113 in our journey through the Bible. Hello out there to everyone. My name is Heather, and I am here with you on Sundays. We're about to do what we do every day. We are about to spend some time in God's Word and let the living Word spend some time on us. We're reading today in 1 Samuel 27, Psalm 141, 1 Chronicles 9, and finishing up in Matthew 10. So let's jump right in. 1 Samuel 27 David Among the Philistines But David kept thinking to himself, Someday Saul is going to get me. The best thing I can do is escape to the Philistines. Then Saul will stop hunting for me in Israelite territory, and I will finally be safe. So David took his six hundred men and went over and joined Achish, son of Maok, the king of Gath. David and his men and their families settled there with Achish at Gath. David brought his two wives along with him, Ahinoam from Jezreel and Abigail, Nabal's widow, from Carmel. Word soon reached Saul that David had fled to Gath, so he stopped hunting for him. One day David said to Achish, If it is all right with you, we would rather live in one of the country towns instead of here in the royal city. So Achish gave him the town of Ziklag, which still belongs to the kings of Judah to this day. And they lived there among the Philistines for a year and four months. David and his men spent their time raiding the Geshurites, the Gerzites, and the Amalekites, people who had lived near Shur toward the land of Egypt since ancient times. David did not leave one person alive in the villages he attacked. He took the sheep, goats, cattle, donkeys, camels, and clothing before returning home to see King Achish. Where did you make your raid today? Achish would ask. And David would reply, Against the south of Judah, the Jeramalites, and the Kenites. No one was left alive to come to Gath and tell where he had really been. This happened again and again while he was living among the Philistines. Achish believed David and thought to himself, By now the people of Israel must hate him bitterly. Now he will have to stay here and serve me forever. Psalm 141, a psalm of David. O Lord, I am calling to you. Please hurry. Listen when I cry to you for help. Accept my prayer as incense offered to you and my upraised hands as an evening offering. Take control of what I say, O Lord, and guard my lips. Don't let me drift toward evil or take part in acts of wickedness. Don't let me share in the delicacies of those who do wrong. Let the godly strike me. It will be a kindness. If they correct me, it is soothing medicine. Don't let me refuse it. But I pray constantly against the wicked and their deeds. When their leaders are thrown down from a cliff, the wicked will listen to my words and find them true. Like rocks brought up by a plow, the bones of the wicked will lie scattered without burial. I look to you for help, O Sovereign Lord. You are my refuge. Don't let them kill me. Keep me from the traps they have set for me, from the snares of those who do wrong. Let the wicked fall into their own nets, but let me escape. 1 Chronicles 9 so all Israel was listed in the genealogical records in the book of the kings of Israel. The people of Judah were exiled to Babylon because they were unfaithful to the Lord. The first of the exiles to return to their property in their former towns were priests, Levites, temple servants, and other Israelites. Some of the people from the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, Ephraim, and Manasseh, came and settled in Jerusalem. One family that returned was that of Athai, son of Amahud, son of Omri, son of Imri, son of Bani, a descendant of Perez, son of Judah. Others returned from the Shilonite clan, including Aziah, the oldest, and his sons. From the Zerorite clan, Jeul returned with his relatives, 
In all, 690 families from the tribe of Judah returned. From the tribe of Benjamin came Salu, son of Meshulam, son of Hadaviah, son of Hasanua, Ibnia, son of Jeroham, Ella, son of Uzi, son of Mikri, and Meshulam, son of Shephthiah, son of Reul, son of Ibnia. These men were all leaders of clans, and they were listed in their genealogical records. In all, 956 families from the tribe of Benjamin returned. Among the priests who returned were Jediah, Jehoiarab, Jakin, Azariah, son of Hilkiah, son of Meshulam, son of Zadok, son of Marioth, son of Ahutub. Azariah was the chief officer of the house of God. Other returning priests were Adiah, son of Jeroham, son of Pashur, son of Malkijah, and Masai, son of Adiel, son of Jazera, son of Meshulam, son of Meshulameth, son of Immer. In all, 1,760 priests returned. They were heads of clans and very able men. They were responsible for ministering at the house of God. The Levites who returned were Shemaiah, son of Hashub, son of Azrikam, son of Hashabiah, the descendant of Merari, Akbakar, Heresh, Galal, Mataniah, son of Micah, son of Zikri, son of Asaph, Obadiah, son of Shemaiah, son of Galal, son of Jaduthun, and Berechiah, son of Asa, son of Elkanah, who lived in the area of Netophah. The gatekeepers who returned were Shalom, Akub, Talmon, Ahiman, and their relatives. Shalom was the chief gatekeeper. Prior to this time, they were responsible for the king's gate on the east side. These men served as gatekeepers for the camps of the Levites. Shalom was the son of Kor, a descendant of Abiasaph from the clan of Korah. He and his relatives, the Korahites, were responsible for guarding the entrance to the sanctuary just as their ancestors had guarded the tabernacle in the camp of the Lord. Phinehas, son of Eleazar, had been in charge of the gatekeepers in earlier times, and the Lord had been with him. And later, Zechariah, son of Meshelamiah, was responsible for guarding the entrance to the tabernacle. In all, there were 212 gatekeepers in those days, and they were listed according to the genealogies in their villages. David and Samuel the seer had appointed their ancestors because they were reliable men. These gatekeepers and their descendants, by their divisions, were responsible for guarding the entrance to the house of the Lord when that house was a tent. The gatekeepers were stationed on all four sides, east, west, north, and south. Their relatives in the villages came regularly to share their duties for seven-day periods. The four chief gatekeepers, all Levites, were trusted officials, for they were responsible for the rooms and treasuries at the house of God. They would spend the night around the house of God, since it was their duty to guard it and open the gates every morning. Some of the gatekeepers were assigned to care for the various articles used in worship. They checked them in and out to avoid any loss. Others were responsible for the furnishings, the items in the sanctuary, and the supplies, such as choice flour, wine, olive oil, frankincense, and spices. But it was the priests who blended the spices. Mattathiah, a Levite, and the oldest son of Shalom the Korahite, was entrusted with baking the bread used in the offerings. And some members of the clan of Kohath were in charge of preparing the bread to be set on the table each Sabbath day. The musicians, all prominent Levites, lived at the temple. They were exempt from other responsibilities since they were on duty at all hours. All these men lived in Jerusalem. They were the heads of Levite families and were listed as prominent leaders in their genealogical records. Jael, the father of Gibeon, lived in the town of Gibeon. His wife's name was Maka, and his oldest son was named Abdon. Jael's other sons were Zer, Kish, Baal, Ner, Nadab, Gedor, Ahio, Zechariah, and Mikloth. Mikloth was the father of Shimeon. All these families lived near each other in Jerusalem. Ner was the father of Kish. Kish was the father of Saul. Saul was the father of Jonathan, Melchishua, Abinadab, and Eshbal. 
Jonathan was the father of Merabal. Merabal was the father of Micah. The sons of Micah were Pithon, Melech, Tariah, and Ahaz. Ahaz was the father of Jada. Jada was the father of Alameth, Asmaveth, and Zimri. Zimri was the father of Moza. Moza was the father of Benaiah. Benaiah's son was Rephaiah. Rephaiah's son was Eliash. Eliash's son was Azel. Azel had six sons, whose names were Azrikam, Bokura, Ishmael, Shiriah, Obadiah, and Hanan. These were the sons of Azel. Matthew 10 Jesus called his twelve disciples together and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits and to heal every kind of disease and illness. Here are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also called Peter. Then Andrew, Peter's brother. James, son of Zebedee. John, James's brother. Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. Jesus sent out the twelve apostles with these instructions. Don't go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, but only to the people of Israel, God's lost sheep. Go and announce to them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure those with leprosy, and cast out demons. Give as freely as you have received. Don't take any money in your money belts, no gold, silver, or even copper coins. Don't carry a traveler's bag with a change of clothes and sandals or even a walking stick. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality, because those who work deserve to be fed. Whenever you enter a city or village, search for a worthy person and stay in his home until you leave town. When you enter the home, give it your blessing. If it turns out to be a worthy home, let your blessing stand. If it is not, take back the blessing. If any household or town refuses to welcome you or listen to your message, shake its dust from your feet as you leave. I tell you the truth. The wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah will be better off than such a town on the judgment day. Look. I am sending you out as sheep among wolves, so be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. But beware, for you will be handed over to the courts and will be flogged with whips in the synagogues. You will stand trial before governors and kings because you are my followers. But this will be your opportunity to tell the rulers and other believers about me. When you are arrested, don't worry about how to respond or what to say. God will give you the right words at the right time. For it is not you who will be speaking. It will be the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. A brother will betray his brother to death. A father will betray his own child. And children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. And all nations will hate you because you are my followers. But everyone who endures to the end will be saved. When you are persecuted in one town, flee to the next. I tell you the truth, the Son of Man will return before you have reached all the towns of Israel. Students are not greater than their teacher, and slaves are not greater than their master. Students are to be like their teacher, and slaves are to be like their master. And since I, the master of the household, have been called the prince of demons, The members of my household will be called by even worse names. But don't be afraid of those who threaten you. For the time is coming when everything that is covered will be revealed, and all that is secret will be made known to all. What I tell you now in the darkness, shout abroad when the daybreak comes. What I whisper in your ear, shout from the housetops for all to hear. Don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. They cannot touch your soul. Fear only God who can destroy both soul and body in hell. What is the price of two sparrows? One copper coin? But not a single sparrow can fall to the ground without your father knowing it. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. 
So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Don't imagine that I came to bring peace to the earth. I came not to bring peace but a sword. I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Your enemies will be right in your own household. If you love your father or mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. Anyone who receives you receives me, and anyone who receives me receives the Father who sent me. If you receive a prophet as one who speaks for God, you will be given the same reward as a prophet. And if you receive righteous people because of their righteousness, you will be given a reward like theirs. And if you give even a cup of cold water to one of the least of my followers, you will surely be rewarded. Jesus is sending them out two by two with his credentials. They're going out as his disciples with his authority and his message. And they're also going out with his compassion. Jesus wants us to go out with his credentials and his compassion. That's what Jesus wants from us as his disciples. And when we do that, we begin to experience his kingdom. His kingdom life becomes alive to us. We begin to see him in a clearer light and experience his compassion in our own life in a new way. But we shouldn't be surprised when people misunderstand or take offense or when we experience persecution. That's what Jesus experienced. That's what he did and that's what came his way. He tells us quite plainly that that's going to be the same for us too. Are you rejected by family or your religious community or the authorities because you serve him and offer his message? Well, it shouldn't be a surprise, Jesus says. That's what happened to him. Jesus still sends us out into this world just like he did with these 12. He sends us with his credentials, his compassion, the presence of Christ himself, Christ in you. He's sending you out as his apprentice, and he wants you to see this broken world the way he sees it. He wants you to have a heart for broken people the way he does, for people like you and me. So go out. Let's do what he's told us to do, responding to his command to go into all the world, taking his credentials with his compassion and making him known. We do this in the power of Christ, as Christ abides in and through us. Let's see what he will do. DailyRadioBible.com that's our home base out here on the interwebs where you are always welcome to stop on by. Thanks for spending another Sunday together here with us. We appreciate so much those of you who reach out to us to let us know what this podcast means to you in your daily life. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. We could not do it without you. If you would like to receive a monthly email newsletter from us, you can get on our list at dailyradiobible.com. There's a quick sign up for it there. As always, Hunter will be back with you again tomorrow morning. But until that time, let's go forward. Let the joy of the Lord be your strength. 
And remember this, you are loved. <laughs>